Hi and welcome to Arrow's coverage of InfoSec 2019. We are once again asking the hard questions of our vendors, finding out what their priorities are into 2020 and how they intend to help our channel to develop to address the ever-changing security landscape. We hope you enjoy this series, and if so, please subscribe. Okay, and we're back again, and uh, we're joined by James. James, I believe you are a returning uh, podcaster. Yes, this is my second podcast uh, with Arrow. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you for having me back. I'm about to say you're a, you're a, a annual uh, annual InfoSec podcaster. Yeah, I think this is my ninth InfoSec. So um, definitely uh, quite experienced with the uh, rigors and the uh, trials <laughs> and tribulations of InfoSec. So yes, that's right. Yeah, it's quite the uh, quite the event. Yes, it is. You know, um, I think you know really Tuesday is the reunion. Wednesday's the work and Thursday's the hangover. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably agree with that. Actually, I'd probably agree with that. So, trend. Um, obviously, we, we spoke last year. Um, lots happened in a year. Um, give us some of the highlights of, of what you guys have released, what you guys have sort of brought to market. What's what's been what's been your year? So I think you know, um, really fantastic year for us. You know, as you know, trend is all about innovation. Very much a product led company. Um, Japanese headquartered, so we're very very passionate about the products and the technology. But really, I think for me, from a channel perspective, a partner ecosystem a perspective in an arrow, it's really been the adoption of our cloud platforms and the different routes to market. So I think very often trend gets called a traditional vendor, which we're very, very proud of, because I think traditional means very stable. That's a, ni that's a very nice way of looking at it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes people, some of the, the, the new startup vendors will say you're a traditional vendor, almost like a, a put down. Yeah, absolutely. But we think, you know, with, with so much money in the bank, with so much uh, pedigree, the fact that we are completely two-tier, I think traditional is a very, very good thing. And it means that we have a, a tremendous amount of flexibility. We're very autonomous um, in, in our various BUs, certainly in the UK. So really in the last 12 months, I think with our uh, adoption on Aerosphere, huge growth with Aerosphere, our partnerships with AWS, Microsoft Azure, you know, people still see Vent Trend as a, a Japanese AV vendor, which we are. We're very proud of that pedigree, but we have so much more. And I think really it's the expansion uh, of our partner uh, routes to market, our flexibility uh, and our continued relationship with Arrow. You know, we've been with Fantastic. you for, for decades now. Yeah, absolutely. I must admit, so two things. First and foremost, I didn't actually realize that you were Japanese. That is, an, that is, that is an, every day is a school day. Um, and obviously, it's interesting that you, you touch on that traditional piece because traditional Japanese companies, NTT, they have a very long view in the future. They're not looking quarter by quarter, year by year. They're looking 10, 15, 20 years out, which is incredibly for, uh, refreshing. And actually, I suppose that traditional piece sort of plays a lot of, um, must play into that sort of ethos quite nicely. So that's, that's a really great way to, uh, to start off. Yeah. So, go on, sorry, no, crack on. Sorry, yes, I mean, last year was our 30th uh, year anniversary. Um, wow. Our founders uh, and uh, COO, uh, Eva Chen, is still much, very much involved. Very, very passionate lady. Was doing women in IT before it became a sort of a I bus think, phrase. Yeah. Uh, and really being Japanese headquarters, although we started in, in, in California with Eva and, uh, and her sister, uh, listed on the Nikkei, I think we have a very, very different ethos uh, to a lot of vendors out there. And actually, there's a very much a dare to fail mentality at Trend. Uh, very uh, small hierarchy. We don't have that sort of real rigid management structure. Yeah, no sort of redundant multiple layers of uh, management. No, and, and, and truly, you know, I, I know a lot of vendors preach this. Eva comes over, we know her very, very well. We know a lot of the uh, executive committee. They really, really listen. And actually, when I started Trend eight years ago, I thought it sounded very cliche. They said, you're either a trend or you're not, and it's so, so true. <laughs> oh, I like that. Because no, I, I must admit, um, one of the things that you can never, you can't buy, you can't necessarily quantify in a financial metric but actually it's probably one of the most important things to measure an organization with and especially organizations where you need that absolute complete and utter sort of all pulling in one direction is culture and I think having a strong culture albeit we've sort of slightly uh, gone left field of, of security but sure. but actually having a culture in an organization where you're relying upon that piece of technology to be developed and sort of owned and operated in such a way that you can rely upon it and and as a CIO of an organization or a, you know, a chief security officer, you can hang your hat on that piece of technology knowing that it's come from a place where people really care about making sure that the technology is absolutely bulletproof is, is incredibly important. First and foremost, we're a technology company. Um, 
you know, I think we see some of our competitors out there. You see lots and lots of marketing around them and potentially their products aren't as strong. Uh, where trends very much uh, direction and, and route to market is technology first. Yep. Uh, and going back to um, you know the whole uh, Japanese flavor and culture, people talk about culture, every vendor, every workplace talks about culture, but let's be honest, it's felt. Mm -hmm. And if you go out and speak to another trend employee, they say the same thing as I do, uh, and other people say the same thing, that's very, very important. And being part of it and, and really loving where you work I think that comes across from a channel and partner perspective because you have to be trusted ultimately. You yeah. have to be transparent and trusted, have technology, but if you're not a trusted vendor, um, you're dead in the water. You know that yeah. more than I do, oh, David. Of course, of course, yeah. And we've seen plenty of vendors come and go over the years who haven't had trust or have be betrayed that trust, um, which, by the way, takes a long time to gain and very little time to lose. So on to um, what we're actually here to talk about, which is obviously... We've had, uh, we had Gavin come on earlier on and talk to us about the technical side of Trends business and sort of some of the technical solutions you guys are putting together. But I think one of the things that's really important in today's industry is to understand the business impact of the technology you acquire and the, you know, that sort of what it enables your business to do rather than just the insurance policy that technology brings. Um, security has l for a long time been seen as a necessary evil um, because let's be honest if there wasn't horrible people out there trying to break into me I wouldn't need security um, which has always been a little bit of a, a bitter pill to swallow especially considering the cost and the complexity of security but I think over the last few years we've seen security become an enabler of greater mobility greater flexibility what are some of the sort of key um, talking points that the trend have got on solutions and customer examples that you've got where you've seen your various different products help and enable people to to do things that have given them greater business agil business agility and i think you know in, in today's complex environment and if you just walk around the uh, the the uh, hall in olympia there's so many vendors out there now you can uh, barely walk around you to can be quite frank. yeah uh, and the messaging it's very very hard to discern what people are saying what that messaging is and for me in working for trend you know, one of the issues that we still have is people don't know everything what we do. No. And no. we have so much technology there, so much cool technology as well. Um, and actually, from a connected threat defense perspective, we have uh, multiple customers out there in the UK globally who use all of our technology. And having that complete visibility, whether that's at an endpoint, whether that's on your server, your IPS, DLP, and all these endpoints talking to each other, all these touch points, IoT, all these sensors talking, that makes it very, very robust. And having that sense of visibility is so, so important. Because if you're a CISO nowadays, you're not bothered about the technology. You, you want to make no. sure that your, your cutting edge, your leading, bleeding edge, that you're delivering your service that your customers require. And you need a trusted vendor. And that is so, so important. So I think the automation and the visibility and flexibility is absolutely key. Let's talk a bit more about automation, because I think it's a massively um, under leveraged topic because if you don't automate then you can end up having to throw more people or you're going to miss things or or you're not going to take advantage of the world we live in today so what are, what are the sort of some of the use cases you found or some of the some of the places where people have leveraged trend technologies to really drive through automation to to drive down the sort of manual processes that maybe you went before or alternatively to sort of as i said enable something that otherwise couldn't have been done unless it was automated. Yeah, I think the first question, though, is what is automation? But, yeah, uh, please, please, please. Because it means so many different things to different people, and, and, and this topic will come up, so I think it's so important to qualify and define that with the end user, with the partner. Uh, and for me, in this cloud world, in this multiple cloud world, the hybrid cloud world, I think from trend perspective, um, you know, eight years ago, we were talking about securing your journey to the cloud before cloud became sexy and uh, the hottest topic. So really, from a use case, I think now with containers, serverless, uh, Trend has a technology at a, a server level that um, if you're spinning up a VM, a hybrid cloud environment, whether that's a VDI, we have technology that wraps around seamlessly straight away around those type of environments. And actually, you know, if you're uh, a, C a CISO and the, um, the security re uh, responsibility that we all have with vendors, having that confidence in a vendor, whether that's from an analyst, from uh, you know, different sources that um, really uh, tell you that it's, it's the truth and it's not just a vendor talking, that is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, 
as far as automating, um, coming back into sort of the, the product piece, automating outcomes, sort of where where do you see trends ability to, because obviously you guys do a lot of um, processing of data, um, various different, you know, you've got all these different um, pieces of technology that, that feed in. What do you do with that though? Because obviously once you've actually gathered information about a, a, poten a potential problem, do you guys have the, the ability to actually automate an, a an outcome to be able to do something? Absolutely. So going back to the fact that Trend are 30 years old, 30 years old, years old, should I say, means that we have huge, huge sensors and networks throughout the globe. And actually, from our point of view, if you find that vulnerability, because we have so many sensors, um, with one of our technologies, I don't like to talk about technology name, but deep security, I'm going to, I'm going to jump. Nice in crack there. on you, you go for it. Um, which is very much around a hybrid cloud. If you have a vulnerability, we all know that vendors can take months, weeks to patch vulnerabilities, and then there's a whole change cycle yeah. that end users have to go through. So we have a technology that can seamlessly patch within minutes um, a, a, um, a vulnerability. Now, this isn't a patch management solution. I want to be very, very clear on that. Yeah. But absolutely, we can provide that level of insurance, things like in change freeze, times when like retail government aren't allowed to make changes. For example, uh, we're coming up to the uh, 2020 Olympics. Uh, Trend are a key sponsor there in Tokyo. We're very, very proud of that. And actually at times when government departments won't be able to make changes, we have technology that will give you that, uh, that, that uh, vulnerability shielding immediately. That's fantastic. I mean, because I must admit, that's got to be a huge um, angle of attack for, for sort of, um, in, well, people who are trying to break into your organization or, or compromise your organization, knowing, I mean, it's pretty obvious when change freezes occur, ta end of tax years, you know, times of political unrest, all these sorts of things, when it's just like, we need to keep all the lights on. That's the perfect opportunity for you know people to exploit um, vulnerabilities that hadn't been found before. So that's a, a fantastic piece of technology. Yeah, absolutely. And we have so many use cases, and you know a lot of the partners that come to talk to us now through Arrow, you know, with your VMware, your Microsoft relationships, and now AWS, we're very complementary to that wrap, and we're very very appreciative with Arrow that they leverage the partner ecosystem, endorse trend, and that we can go to market really in a three-way you know, three-way three, three way triangle, Arrow, the partner, uh, and ourselves. That's very, very important to us. Yeah, good. So as far as um, we've spoken about sort of how we can be um, proactive, but how can we fundamentally be sort of enablers? Um, so one of the places where we've seen security enable adoption of a, of a technology that's enabled business growth and acceleration is cloud. I think cloud is one of these technologies where day one, um, it was seen as quite high risk to move to the cloud, um, but I think with technologies like the ones that you bring to bear, you've enabled that adoption, which has enabled businesses to be more agile, to provide more flexibility. So can you tell us a bit about sort of how uh, the journey that you've taken some customers on from on-prem inflexible infrastructure to cloud infrastructure and the sort of underlying sort of capabilities you've, you've enable along the way? Yeah, sure. I think from, from uh, Trend Micro's perspective, we probably see two scenarios in the main from an end user perspective. People will look to security right at the very, very beginning, and that's obviously the utopia because you're part of that enablement. Um, and uh, secondly, people will sometimes potentially think about security at the end. Yeah. Um, and, and for us, you know, being able to have a solution that integrates into an existing environment, whether that's an on-prem, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, and we have we have that solution. And actually from um, Trend Micro and our partner's perspective, having that validation, going back to that 30 years of experience, threat research, the fact that we have 6,000 people working with for Trend, and over 50% are in our threat research, makes it really, really important that we have uh, technology, what does what it says on the tin. People have confidence in us, and again, back from a partner perspective, being able to be flexible, fit in with the partner's agenda, uh, is, is I think a, a really unique for us. Fantastic, and then obviously, from the end customer's perspective, you know, you are because our partners are only as uh, as only sort of able to do things as their end customers are. You are fundamentally giving those end customers better sort of business agility than they had previously through adopting technology. And does that come from from our partners? with Trend getting involved earlier in the, the sales cycles and, and sort of baking security in from day one? 
Right, as I say, that, that's the utopia, but yeah. I don't think that's reality. Uh, not always. And, you know, the world's changed now, I think, in the last four to five years, as we know. And, and now with the consumption model, software as a service, um, the advent of AWS, the monster that AWS yeah. is yeah. now, and, and Azure, um, we have uh, many routes to market, whether that's going through uh, one of the uh, arrow sphere uh, around that perspective. Uh, and really, for me, the days of perpetual licensing, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, very it's old school, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's still there. It's still very, very important. But again, having that um, flexibility from a partner program perspective, uh, but more from a technology perspective, um, is, is truly important. And I think from consumption and having, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a case now where with Shadow IT, we find a lot of our end users because they might use deep security from uh, one of the marketplaces they'll get in touch with us and say, we'd like you to come in. We've been using you for some time. Can you come in and give us a, a, a wider picture, a broader p picture of what you do? And often that's when we really get into the crux of the end user, sell multiple products, and hopefully, um, you know, give them a solution that they're confident with. Fantastic. Well, James, thank you ever so much for coming on. Been a pleasure. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next year. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Please come back again next week for the next instalment of our exciting coverage from InfoSec 2019. See you then.